Radio Raheem with Gary Russell Jr. victorious tonight in Brooklyn, man. Barclay Center, center stage, uh, the big fight before the big fight. It right. was wildly entertaining, but what I most noticed at the beginning was you're very aggressive, man. Uh, you were clearly able to control the fight and That's would have right. been able to just run the rounds out, win all the rounds, but you didn't settle for that. Why not? Man, intellect over athleticism. My father always told me, if you better, be better. Never fight down to your competition. We controlled the pace of the fight from the first round till they stopped the fight. Um, I wanted to get him up out of there. This fight wasn't going to go the distance anyway. Uh, Martinez is an experienced fighter. He's been in, done many rounds. He's, he's a tough guy, not a lay down type of fighter. Right. What was it that you brought to the table that really just disabled him from first round right through? Intellect. A lot of these guys are just good athletes. Intellect over athleticism. My jab, my boxing IQ, my ring generalship, all of that dictated the, the pace of the fight. <laughs> I saw your ring entrance. It was unique. Uh, the drums and whatnot. I was listening. For, I kept listening for the music. I was like, "Oh, that is the music." Uh, I know you said in the press conference you did it for the culture. Can you talk about just that the the garb you wore, the drums, the significance of that, and how that relates to the culture? Oh my God! I pull my energy from my ethnicity. If you pay attention to any sport that's out here, pay attention to the ethnicity that's actually dominating. I pull my energy from my melanin. The people that don't understand that or know that word, you might want to Google that. <laughs> I didn't see the cut open, but it's the cut that stopped the fight. Do you remember the punch that, that, that opened up that cut? Oh, yeah, it was a left uppercut. That, uh, no, actually a right uppercut that opened the fight, uh, opened the cut. He wanted to close the distance and try to boil his way in, so we started turning the uppercuts underneath. Um, we fired the uppercut, it split the eye, and then we immediately fired the right hook behind it and it all the way opened up. I know you have Leo Santa Cruz on your shirt, but I saw Floyd Mayweather ringside. Uh, you, you prefer Leo over Javante Davis if you could get either one? I mean, of course. He's in the division that wish that I'm in. Why not? You know, he has a, I want a unification bout. I've been asking for a unification match for the last four years since I had the title. Um, in order for me to fight a Javante Tank Davis, he's not going to move down to 26. I have to move up to 30, and even then, even then, in order for me to actually get that fight, a lot of people don't understand that I'm not ranked in the sanctioning body, that he, the title that he has. So I can immediately challenge uh, the WBC champion at 130 because I'm the champion at 126, get that title, and then we can get a unification match. You say you've been looking for Leo to get in the ring with you for four years. Uh, what's been stopping it? I'm not sure. Maybe it's Leo. Maybe it's his team. I do know that we. I'm the reason that stops him from being able to compete in the 2008 Olympics because I was the Olympian. Um, he couldn't get past me then. We had bigger gloves on and we had a head gear on. <laughs> gloves much smaller and there's no head gear. That rock em, sock and robot stuff ain't going to work with me. Intellect over athleticism. And lastly, you use a lot of intellect and a lot of athleticism tonight because you had a fight that was a co-main event and you were working a corner early in the night. That's a lot to ask of a fighter. Uh, talk to me about why you make that kind of sacrifice and that kind of commitment to your family. And is that something that's going to be ongoing when the fights get bigger, when the Leo Santa Cruz are the main event? Will you still be working the corner? Of course, of course. You know, I, this, I pull my energy from my family. I pull my energy from my family and my loved ones. My, and I do this for my, my friends, my family, and my loved ones. You know, a lot of these guys, when they get ready for their fights, they have to go away from home to kind of focus in. I don't have to focus in. That's what I do it for. Whatever your occupation is, I'm pretty sure you're doing to provide a sense of foundation and stability and protection for you, yourself, your friends, and your loved ones. It's the same thing here, man. We do this in our sleep. I'm never in unfamiliar territory. So, of course, you will always see me working my younger brother's corner. Even in the, when I'm concluding the end of my career, I still be working my younger brother's corner. Well, you are the oldest of six. I'm sure not every brother's a fighter, but every brother looks at you as the older, the wiser. What kind of wisdom do you impart to your younger brothers that are in the ring and outside the ring? Oh, my God. That's, that's infinity. I mean, <laughs> it's always something to be learned, you know, and I'm not the only one that's doing the teaching. You know, I'm wise enough to understand that you can always learn, even from, I can still learn, even from my younger brothers, you know. So we, we believe in a dynasty, and a dynasty is, uh, in my eyes, information that's passed down from generation to generation. By the time my younger brothers get to the point in their career that I am now, I expect for them to be better than me.
Well, I think the boxing fans learned tonight, if they didn't know already, that you're an exciting fighter. You're not a distance guy. You're looking to come there and put on a show and get the knockout. Thank you for a wonderful performance tonight. Radio Raheem with Gary Russell Jr.